guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is another thrift flip episode where I take items I've thrifted and upcycle them for resale. Lately, I've thrifted a few sets of canisters, so I figured let's try some different stuff on these canisters that I have. Now, I don't even think this one was on a thrift haul. It's just something I happened to pick up and I didn't film. So it has the sunflowers on this side, and the top is actually super cute, like an old milk jug or something um it actually would look great if it didn't have the sunflowers on here and i could just paint the bottom white if i wanted and keep the top yellow but no we have to be extra on this channel so we're just going to totally transform this thing i'm thinking copper is super hot right now what if we can make a copper canister set so never done this before but i'm excited about it I think it might work. So I have a set of four of these. One of them does not have the top, but I think it'll be okay. We're going to make a set of them anyway. And then I have this set with the blue and the little fruits and everything on it. I had a set of four, but when I was getting ready to film this video and getting all the canisters out, I realized one of them had become a casualty of my kids. Hmm, I guess it's better now than after I finish the set, but nonetheless, still annoying. So I only have three of these, but my plan for these is to try to make them look like an old croc. Like I'm loving old crocs. Who doesn't love old crocs? But they are super expensive. So I like the little shape it has going on. I'm kind of wondering if I can create that effect, put a little stamp on it and just make it the cutest little canister set. It is a super nice set and it even has a seal on it. So yeah, we'll see where this goes. I have an idea in my head. I don't have the materials for it yet, but I think we can do it. So let's go ahead and get started on these projects. Since I want this canister set to look like an old crock, I decided it needed a little bit of texture. It was just a little bit too smooth and shiny for me. So to accomplish this, I'm gonna do the baking soda paint mixture. I normally do half and half, but since I just wanna add a little bit of texture to this piece, not a lot, I'm gonna do less baking soda and more paint. So it's just personal preference, whatever the look is that you are going for. You just add the paint and the baking soda together and then you just simply mix it up. I'm just using paint from the craft department, but you can use whatever paint you have on hand, latex, chalk paint, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna put one light coat on these. I'm not going for full coverage. I'm just doing one coat to add a little bit of texture. I never had any problems with my paint mixture stick sticking to pieces, but if you do, you can always spray them with a coat of sealer before you paint and that should help. Once the paint was dry, I moved the canister set to my shop where I'm going to spray paint it using Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color Smoky Beige and a satin finish. I also put painter's tape around the seals of the lid because I did not want any paint to get on those seals. When I spray paint, I just do a very light coat. You don't want to have any drips. You don't want to get too close. You don't want to overly spray it. So a few light coats is much better than one heavy coat. I ended up putting two coats on this canister set. So the Crocs have dried and I'm not really loving this color on it. I kind of want it to be a little bit lighter, more like this actual Croc. So what I did was I grabbed a few colors, some white, some beachcomber beige, some antique parchment, and a little bit of gray, and just mix them together to try to get the color that I wanted. I'm sure there's probably a color on the shelf that is a perfect match to this but that would require me going to the store and getting it and i don't have time for that so i just tried to mix a few colors together um to get my own custom color now the only thing is when you're mixing paints make sure that you mix enough to cover all your pieces i'm thinking one to two coats on these will be perfect and i think that's looking a lot better than this it's much lighter so i'm gonna put one to two coats on all the crocs and then we'll see where it goes from there sometimes it's just trial and error when you try in something for the first time 
A Lazy Susan is great for painting round surfaces. It's so easy, you just turn it and you can get nice even brush strokes if that's what you wanted. You can usually find them pretty cheap at garage sales or thrift stores, so be on the lookout for them. They really come in handy, especially for these round surfaces. The paint color ended up being a little bit lighter than the croc, but that's pretty darn close and I think it looks good. I love mixing colors and I think I'm pretty good at it. So fun when you can just make your own custom color and get exactly what you want. Now we need to add some numbers to our croc. I'm gonna be using the typesetting stamp from IOD. This one includes uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and numbers, so it is a great set to have on hand. I'm gonna be using paint in the color True Navy. I want that dark blue color that you see in Crocs. However, ink is definitely the way to go when you are using stamps, and they do make a blue ink. I just did not have any, so I'm using this paint color and a foam brush and just lightly putting it on the stamp. Now, I don't know if y'all watched me use a stamp for the first time on camera a few months ago and I decided to do a round surface for the first time ever using a stamp and it was a nightmare. I had to use my face. I had to wipe it off so many times. Like I could not get it, but there is hope. I have come a long way. I can now stamp on a round surface with no issues. So you just need practice and what I do is I hold it in place with one hand and then I take the other hand and I rub around the rest of the stamp and I don't move my other hand again until I pull it off and there you go. And even if it's not perfect, it's okay. As long as it's not smudged, I'm okay with perfectly imperfect. That's what you see when you see vintage Crocs anyway. I am interrupting this video to bring y'all a giveaway. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. And what am I giving away? The most sought after item in the crafter community right now. I am giving away a set of crockery stamps. Now, if you've been looking for these and haven't been able to find them, it is because all the retailers are out and actually IOD has sold out of this stamp. But it will be back in stock, but not till the end of May. So I decided not to use it on my channel until it's back in stock, just because I don't want to constantly be showing y'all something that y'all cannot find. And also IOD obviously makes all kind of other amazing stamps that I have been trying and using and loving. So I figured why not give away my crockery stamp? At first I was like, oh, Julie, that's kind of tacky to give away a used stamp but this whole channel is about used stuff so y'all don't care right y'all just want this stamp <laughs> so i'm giving away the crockery stamp and i'm also going to give away an ink pad an iod ink pad and an iod a black ink and maybe i'll throw in like a cypress breadboard or something i don't know it just depends how amazing this goes now what do you need to do to win? First, you need to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You need to like this video. You need to share this video and you need to comment on this video. Hopefully all the things you already do if you are a long time subscriber of mine, it 100% helps my channel, supports my channel when you do that. I'm gonna announce the winner of the giveaway on my next thrift flip episode. So I guess you'll have to watch that one too. So if you've been dying, for the crockery stamp. Make sure you do all this so I can send you this amazing stamp. And I promise y'all, 
when the new ones are back in stock, I'm going to do a giveaway with some fresh new ones. Now let's get back to the video because the next set of Crocs that I'm doing, y'all are going to love. The first thing I'm going to do is spray this metallic finish Rust-Oleum spray paint on the tops of the canisters. I wish this spray paint had a color, but it doesn't. It just says metallic finish. So I just picked out the top of the spray paint can that looked the most like copper. I was actually very happy with how this turned out, but if you have a product that you used before that really truly looks like copper, let me know. I would love to try some other products. I always paint the bottoms of my pieces first, and then I turn it over and paint the top last. For the base of the canister set, I'm going to be using white Rust-Oleum spray paint in a flat finish. I'm not going to be distressing these pieces, so you can use whatever paint you're comfortable with. If you want to use chalk paint, you can. I just figured spray paint will work perfect for here. You just want to do nice even strokes and you want to do several light coats as opposed to one heavy coat. I also sealed these sets with Rust-Oleum clear coat once they were completely dry. So I did use a top coat on these as well. Now for the fun part, let's see if we can age these copper tops. I'm using this copper piece, the scoop that I have as inspiration. So we're kind of starting off with a little bit different color copper, but I want to try to get like this blue patina happening here and an aged look. So to accomplish this, I'm going to use two different colors, this bright blue color and this green color that I used in my last video. I think the best way to get an aged effect is to layer colors, layer paint, and then you're going to get the most natural look using this technique. I'm just adding the colors like in the corners and the cracks and the sides, wherever I think that the natural patina would happen. So just have fun with it. Don't think about it too much. I'm layering the colors, a little bit of blue, a little bit of the green. And now to get the age effect, we're going to add the Waverly antiquing wax. I'm not watering it down. I'm using it at 100%. And what you're going to do, you of course, you want to wait till your blue paint is dry as well. Well, um, you're just going to wipe it on. So I'm just going to do the top first. I'm going to work in sections because if you let it dry too long, it's hard to get off. So I'm going to do the top first. And you see there's a lot of brush strokes. The trick to getting rid of the brush strokes and making it look more natural is to take a paper towel and dab. That paper towel will give you like a very beautiful aged effect when you dab, not wipe. And then it was kind of hard to get like underneath and all the little crevices of this piece. So then I just took a dry paintbrush and just kind of brushed where the brush strokes were and the smaller paintbrush got rid of the bigger brush strokes, if that makes sense. So this was super fun. I felt like it was like just doing some art and I think it came out really amazing. I felt like the base of the canister was way too white and I needed to bring some copper down to the base. So I just cut up an index card to try to figure out what size would look good on all four of my canisters since they're four different sizes. And I'm gonna be using IOD air dry clay to create a little label to go onto the canisters. I decided to go with numbers since I didn't have like small enough letter stamps to be able to create a label. I thought numbers one through four would work perfect for this. I'm just gonna put the clay on this gridded mat. You also wanna make sure to put something down. I'm using flour, that way my clay doesn't stick to the mat. And I'm just using my little card as reference to see how big I need to make my clay. And then I'm going to take a metal cork back ruler and an X-Acto knife, and I'm going to cut my clay to the size that I need. Then I'm gonna take my stamp, the same exact stamps that I just used on the other Crocs. I'm using on here, but in a different way. I'm going to push them into the clay and that's going to create an impression it's as easy as that you just push it in and then you take it out now it did kind of move the edges of the clay a little bit so then i just took my ruler and kind of straightened them up a little bit 
I want my labels to have the same curve as a canister set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them dry overnight on each canister that they are going on, but I'm gonna put a Ziploc bag in between my label and the canister set so it doesn't um, stick to it because I still need to do the painting technique. I'm gonna do the same pa te painting <laughs> technique that I did on the top and seal it and everything before I attach it to the canister set. So I'm gonna leave these overnight to dry. I got the labels painted with a copper spray paint and how good did these come out? They've been drying all night. They're nice and hard and sturdy and you can actually sand this clay once it's dry. And I did wanna make it, like leave it looking handmade, but I find there's way too many of my fingerprints on here and you just never know nowadays. Like I don't wanna get a frame for a crime or something. So I'm going to just take a very light grit sandpaper. I'm going to, since I'm saying it anyway, I'm going to kind of like round out the corners and y'all see how it dried to the curvature of the canister. And then I'm going to just sand some of the top, just smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm going to continue with that copper patina look on it. I'm going to spray it with a coat of Rust-Oleum clear coat and then I'm going to attach it to this canisters. I'm not going to show y'all all this because I want y'all to be surprised at the final product. It came together so amazing. This project did take a while but it was really fun and I love the way that it came out. Y'all please let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. All right guys, what was your favorite canister set? Please leave a comment below and let me know which one you thought came out the best. Hopefully this gives you some ideas to maybe upcycle and update a canister set you already have, or if you thrift one, you'll have these ideas in the back of your head. But of course you can always take these techniques and use them on different stuff. It doesn't have to be a canister set canister set. I just want to inspire y'all and then y'all can take this and just run with it. If you love these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I upload thriftlet videos every single week. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I love to know what y'all think. Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big